And as I looked at my life, I asked myself a question. And I want to ask you a question. How many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far? Raise your hands, please. Now, that proves the point of what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce in life is only a tip of the iceberg of what's possible for us. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of our critics call. All of you suckers who write the rain magazine. I want you to think about some major goal that gives your life a sense of meaning right now. Something that will give your life a sense of purpose and direction. Some personal goal that you'd like to achieve. And some career goal, some financial goal that you'd like to achieve. And your social contribution. Horace Mann said we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. An iPod. A phone. What's your goal? Are you getting it? What's your dream? What is it you want to do with your life? What would the world be like if everybody lived their dream? Here's what I found about life. It is, it's not as complicated as I used to make it. I think that life is about dreams and stories. Everything that exists, the world at one time was barren, but everything that exists, hotels, planes, they weren't here. Everything that we see every day, computers, all of the things that we see, someone had a dream. Someone had a dream of, of a person standing on stage and their voice being amplified so they don't have to scream and yell and can be heard by thousands. Someone had that dream of how to transport us from one place to the other quickly and safely. The clothes you have on, where you're now seated, all came out of somebody's dream, the world's greatest achievement. I still have a dream. The ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never went after that dream. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. A Mr. Nobody, a man who doesn't exist. They say, dream big. They say, you could be anything you want. And then the same people come around and discourage us to not dream at all so that we could be more like them, so that we could be realistic. We're gonna have people tell us that we can't do shit. You need to be more realistic. You need to quit being such a dreamer. You need to quit talking about all these things that you wanna do and get something realistic. I've never understood that about society. You better be fucking pissed when people doubt you. Don't give in. Don't be like everybody else. Don't give up. Don't settle because things are hard. It's not about anything else but taking what people say you can't do and shoving it down their motherfucking throat. It's a mentality. Build the kind of life that says I told you so without having to say a fucking word.
It's okay to want to step on motherfuckers' throats that say shit to you. It's okay to want to cut motherfuckers' heads off whenever they fucking say, you're not going to do this, and you're not going to do that, and you're not going to do this. gift. Use the negativity and become stronger, become better, become faster, become smarter. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect, so we never dare to ask the universe for it. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job. And our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way that it is. And that your life is to live your life inside the world and try not to get in too much trouble and maybe get an education and get a job and make some money and have a family. But life can be a lot broader than that when you realize one simple thing. And that is that everything around us that we call life was made up by people that are no smarter than you. Find out what it is you want and go after it as if your life depends on it. Why? Because it does. But what do we say? But, uh, but there always be tomorrow. Oh no. There's no guarantees you're gonna show up tomorrow. There are a lot of people who were here yesterday that they're not here today. There are a lot of opportunities that were around yesterday. They're not here today. I have a simple question for you. Would you follow you? Are you hearing me? Would you follow yourself? So I want you to take a step outside of your body right now and visualize it. I want you to take a good look at yourself from a third party perspective. What do you eat? How do you perform at the office? How hard do you go at the gym? How much do you contribute to society? What is the impact you have on your peers and your family? Do you focus on personal growth? Or are you out there seeking for selfish gratification? When you're working at your dream, somebody said the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when you when it's hard and there's a struggle, see what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you build, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. Oh, it's, it's it's something that you get up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you're a different kind of person. You walk with a different kind of spirit. Listen to me, your life will never be the same again. All the failures, all the mistakes, all the hurt, all, it's over. But hear what I'm telling you, it's over. Poverty is over. Would you 
follow you. And when you get to that point, when you can really look at yourself in the mirror and say yes with a proud smile, then we have no choice but to follow you. Because you'll be a legend. So get there. Success, many will love you for it. The majority will hate you. Because your success makes them feel insufficient in their current endeavor. Reminds them of where they could have done it, but they came up short and how they didn't revisit it. Where they went at it and failed, and failure is what stood. They never revisited it again. I say, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal or rob from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year. But eventually, it will subside. And something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. What I'm saying is the character of who you are. It's not the title that makes you, it's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater or the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, when it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. That's when it's tough to have faith then. And that's when you need to call on your faith then. They said faith is the oil that, that takes the friction out of living. You've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration. Every transformation always gets worse before it gets better. Confucius said, uh, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. There's a, a redemptive power that making a choice has, you know, rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening make a choice right you just decide what it's going to be who you're going to be how you're going to do it just decide and then from that point the universe is going to get out your way spartans what is your profession <laughs> We all fall down in life, guys. The question is, who gets back up? All of you chumps are gonna bow when I whoop him. All of you, I know you got him. I know you got him, Vic. But the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. You ain't gonna die at the end of pain and success. You're not gonna die because you're feeling a little pain. My why is every single day when I wake up, every minute of the day, every hour of the day, I have an opportunity. Somebody who quit, somebody who gave up, somebody who stopped in life. I have the power at my nickname, the refresher. I have the power as the refresher to make you believe again, to make you get up when you got up three times and you say, I'm not getting up no more. That's my why. Your why is gonna push you when you can't push yourself. When you want to quit and give up, your why is going to give you that edge you need, that advantage you need, that, that lift that you need to get to the next level. Your why? Do the job right or don't do it at all. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. Same mother It's not easy. If, if it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. You don't beg average people to be phenomenal. You don't beg good people to be phenomenal. You just are phenomenal and you will attract phenomenal.
That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. That if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or thought, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it, with the help of God you'll get it. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. I'm talking about a problem in my life. So for you, I don't know what it is, but that problem, you cannot ignore it. Why? It will not go away. It will not go away on its own. It will not. You won't just wake up one day and it won't be there anymore. It's going to be there and it will haunt you for the rest of your life. So I'm telling you from personal experience, deal with it. Deal with it, and the sooner you deal with it, and the sooner you overcome it, the sooner you get to your rewards, baby. The sooner you get on the other side of it, the sooner you begin to feel fulfillment. The sooner you get on the other side of self-actualization, your dreams become a reality. The sooner you get on the other side of the problem is a wealth of success. The sooner you deal with the fact that you have test anxiety, deal with it. It's not the end of the world, deal with it. Because when you deal with it, you can create a solution for it, and you can get over it. Deal with it. That, 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 that you and your children don't have the best relationship, deal with it. Deal with the fact that you are a procrastinator. Deal with the fact that it's hard for you to execute. Deal with the fact uh, every time something happens, you're worried about it. Deal, deal with the fact that you have this anxiety that every time you're about to reach another level of success, every time you're about to go to another level, you, 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 you feel overwhelmed. Deal with the fact that you're struggling with your success, that, that you feel like, why me and why not my sister and why me? Why not other people? Deal with the fact that you feel guilty that you're successful. Deal with it. And ladies and gentlemen, I started working on my dream. And most people don't work on their dreams. Why? For many years, I didn't. One is because of fear. The fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? The other thing is that most people, ladies and gentlemen, they get comfortable. They stop growing. They stop working on themselves. They stop stretching. They stop pushing themselves. And they end up becoming very cynical about life and they throw in the towel on themselves and on their families and on their dreams. And the other thing is that most people don't feel worthy. What I'm doing now, I could have been doing years ago. But because I did not have a college education, because I didn't believe in myself, because I allowed other people's opinion of me to control my destiny, I didn't act on my ideas. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life, people who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who aren't growing, people who have stopped dreaming. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry, people who are unstoppable and unreasonable, people who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. My mother used to say, birds of a feather flock together. If you run around with losers, you will end up a loser. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. The next step is, that is you. That is you. 
that no one can do it for you but you. And even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. What if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up, or somebody say, you can count on me, and they don't come through? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. You are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. I want you to think about it and envision it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. That that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself and I can do this even if no one else sees it for me I must see it for myself that's necessary it's also ladies and gentlemen necessary that you be creative when you're working on your ideas that you understand the importance of, of changing up I can live my dream it's necessary I work on myself surround myself with winners Become creative. It's me. I gotta make it happen. It's not over until I win.